shows the difference between wild salmon and hatchery reared farm salmon. Wild salmon swim thousands of miles during their lives on their journeys to and from the rivers where they were born and their feeding grounds in the North Atlantic. Farm salmon spend their lives packed into pens where they are regularly dosed with medicines and chemicals to reduce the risk of disease. It is my deeply held belief that farming salmon in the current way is damaging our coastal habitats and the creatures that depend upon those habitats to survive. I believe that parasitic sea lice that breed in their billions amongst caged farm salmon spread to and kill wild fish as they pass by. I believe that these fish farm sea lice are a cause of the catastrophic decline we have witnessed in the West Highlands and Islands wild salmonid populations in recent years. My firmly held view is that the negative impact of salmon farming on our marine and freshwater environment is intolerable. It is a disgrace to those whose duty it is to protect and preserve our wild creatures for the pleasure and enjoyment of present and future generations. of sea in Scotland to the southwest of Oban is known as the Firth of Lorne. It is home to a great variety of species including the very rare sea anemone which is protected under the UK Biodiversity Action Plan. For more than a decade now, there has been evidence that pollution and untreated waste from fish farms causes major problems for the animals in these areas. The people, shellfish growers and inshore fishermen who live and work there and depend upon clean seas for their livelihoods. is one of the islands in the Firth where there are some of the most spectacular rock reefs in Britain and the area is deservedly designated as a European Special Area of Conservation. The Longa Reef should have been protected from damage, however consent was given for a salmon farm. Local divers filmed a portion of the reef about 100 metres to 150 metres from the farm 
during the first week that it was stocked with fish. Eight weeks later, the reef was covered in grey matter. In this area, the natural silt is brown. After 13 months, in the same area and on the same reef, the divers found the first white bacterial mats, typically found in areas of high organic pollution. Until recently, the overall contribution of fish farms to nutrient pollution has been unquantified. But OSPA, the mechanism by which governments of the western coasts of Europe cooperate to protect the marine environment of the North East Atlantic, published guidelines in the year 2000 for calculating nutrient losses for aquaculture. Their report indicated for the first time the extent of nutrient pollution from fish farms. This year some 7,500 tonnes of nitrogen, comparable to the annual sewage inputs from approximately 3.2 million people and 1,240 tonnes of phosphorus, comparable to that from 9.4 million people were discharged by fish farms. In 1997, Scotland's population was 5.1 million people. To investigate whether the grey material and white bacterial mats were simply a seasonal change, the divers visited similar reefs in this special area of conservation. Over the last decade and more, the direct and indirect problems caused by nutrient enrichment has emerged as a major issue affecting the marine environment. At first sight, this might seem puzzling. One might think that more nutrients mean more plants, and that more plants mean more food for everything else. Unfortunately, it isn't as simple as this, and the reason why it isn't so simple is partly due to the astonishing levels of human input that has overwhelmed natural cycles. Like global warming, Part of the problem is that this pollution has no smell or colour. Effectively, it is out of sight and out of mind. The mud below the bacterial mat is this dead zone, 100 metres to 150 metres from an established salmon farm is black, because most of the burrowing animals have died.
according to the standards to which this industry is supposed to work, there should be no bacterial rats. Only the most resilient of animals continue to survive in this now hostile environment. Our mountains and moorlands make us what we are. Every creature, human or animal, depends upon that land for survival. Therefore, whatever hurts Scotland's environment hurts us all. In our brief stewardship of this irreplaceable treasure, let us strive to preserve its integrity. When we are gone, let there be no sign of our passing other than the kindly imprint of our care. This is our duty to future generations. There is no room for compromise.